Jamaica has an endless bounty with more than a few of my all-time favorite flavors. Nutmeg and pimento trees, Blue Mountain coffee, fresh fish and seafood, scotch bonnets, the world's best lemons, and fresh sugar cane. But there is one flavor experience that must be imported. Grapes for winemaking cannot grow and thrive on the island, but this hardly means that wine isn't an ideal companion to Jamaican dishes. Deborah Taylor Smith, known as Wine Lady Deborah, brings her experience palette to help people across Jamaica learn the ins and outs of great wines and the best pairings with classic Jamaican cuisine. It's interesting how diverse um, our food is. And one of the things I have found about our food is it contains layers of complexity and there's a depth to our food that you don't always find in other foods. We cannot grow wine uh, making grapes here because we have way too much heat mm -hmm. to, um, to that, that is going to ripen the grapes way before what we call the phenolics of the grape have had a chance to develop. Wines aren't made in Jamaica, correct? They are, they are made imported. elsewhere, they are imported here. What is it though that in, in your life experience that really brought you to this idea of I want to start pairing wines with Jamaican dishes. My main experience started in 2004 when I was invited um, to manage a portfolio of wines. I realized that uh, wine is a beverage for all occasions, all palates, all times of the day, all budgets. And it's a much more user-friendly beverage than we are led to believe. Uh, for so long, it has been something that you know has had this mystery about it and it's sort of elitist or even elusive but at the end of the day you know it is a beverage and to be enjoyed by everyone and when i came into wines in 2004 i realized that wine were being drunk by i don't know two percent of our population because the mass of the jamaican population is you know not exposed to wine and can't really afford it. So how do you bridge that gap? Because if I'm talking to 2%, then clearly my business is limited, but I gotta grow my business. And we realized pretty early that we needed to find a way to make it user-friendly and approachable. I just want you to pick it up and smell it. Tell me what we're smelling. It, for me, I realized that, look, if I'm able to tell someone that, you know, if you're having your curry goat, your oxtail, your stew peas, and you can drink it with this, or even your patty, like the Jamaican patty is a staple. If you are having a patty and you have it with a glass of wine, you have now elevated the whole experience. Yeah. Still getting the, still getting the salt Which is good. Yeah. For me, it is important to say to persons that, look, no matter what you're eating, no matter what your taste profile is, no matter what your budget is, no matter how old you are, I can find you a wine that you're not only going to like, you're going to love. So we have just had this fantastic tasting experience with you. And as soon as we get out of here, we're on our way to go find some, some chicken on the side of the road. Yeah. What is the best wine pairing that you would recommend with jerk chicken? Ooh, so... With the jerk chicken, um, do you have a tolerance level for pepper or no? I love it. You love I've, pepper. I've actually been taking on even more the more I've been here. If you want something that is going to tame the pepper, then um, a, a nice crisp prosecco is going to help the palate to kind of cleanse itself and to uh, to wash the pepper off. Okay. So something with a little bit of sweetness, like a riesling, a medium sweet riesling, or a moscato is also something that would work. I have to I have to confess a bear with jerk is awesome. I just have to say. Right and then um, if you wanted a red wine, then uh, you know a lighter style red blend, one of those kind of off dry reds. Or for someone like me who doesn't like wines that are sweet, I would have a glass of Pinot Noir. Cheers, it was so great to oh, meet you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.